move number one, we're going to do a headlock escape. Let's do it. So the most important thing when we're teaching headlock escapes is we have to re reinforce to the students that the most important thing is that I'm on my side and I'm not giving my arm to my opponent because this is no longer a headlock escape. This turns into like a totally different position. Okay, So we're going to start them off in the right direction to make sure that our elbow is tucked in and we're on our side. Typically when someone's attacking our head, this leg is going to be accessible. Okay, so I want to put my hook inside and I'm going to use that hook as just like a point of control for me to help me get to my knees here. Okay, take a look at this detail. When I get to my knees, I put my toes towards my butt and I pivot. I'm reaching over the shoulder. And I'm pivoting onto my knee and I'm strong here. Now from here I'm going to push, pulse my leg and push my weight onto his hips here. Okay, This leg is posted because if I'm on my knees and he's pulling my head down, it's more likely that he's, he can maybe roll me. So this gives me some control. right? So from here I'm going to reach, grab his wrist. I have my shoulder pressing on his shoulder here, you can see, and I pull the wrist to my chest. And we end up in this scenario here. Okay. You know, sometimes you'll see the training partners just release this hook and push, push into a modified headlock situation here. And that's fine too, but let's uh, work for the first, you know, when we take this back. One last time. Okay. I don't allow the arm. I hook. Now with this hook, I'm not trying to bring him to me. No. I use this hook just a lot to help me get to my own knee. You know? So I'll reach towards the mat, simultaneously get to my knee, pull my hands out, post and find a solid position here. And from here, just pressure his shoulder with my shoulder, and I can escape right from here. Move number two. This is right here. Move number two, we're going to focus on the headlock, we're not going to apply the arm lock. We just want to get the reversal from being on the bottom to getting on top. This is going to be the movement here. Okay. Our students have to do this. They're going to have to get to their knees and use their shoulder as a point of, as a reference point. Okay, because if I can lean on my shoulder, I can get to my knees more efficiently. So keep an eye out for that when you're making your rounds. If you see people struggling, this is usually why. So again, we're on our side. I don't give him my arm. Okay? I need some type of grip. You know, maybe I can pass his beard like this or something. If you don't have a beard, grabbing the shoulder is fine. Okay? I can't do this move if I'm close to him. So I'm going to get at least two scoops. One, two, and now from here, I'm leaning on my shoulder, get to my knees, and I pull my hand out. And from here, I use that hand to push, and I, I turn the corner effortlessly. Okay, remind the students, look, I actually want them to do this. 
when I get here, I want my training partner to roll me how this. Okay? Because that's going to happen 99% of the time. So I'll get another rep in here. Look. One, two, I get to my elbow. And he's going to roll me again. Roll, 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 roll. And it's as easy as that. Okay, so the first time, let him roll you. Second time, prevent it. And let him go. Go 100%. It's very easy. So from here, I'm going to clear the path. The same thing. He's still going to try to roll. And I'm going to put my forearm on his jaw. Once he's settled down, the other hand on my wrist. And I go over his head. That's important. Okay, A lot of people, they do this. They just go up like this. And you strain your neck to be strong. From over here. Now I solve that problem. Okay, move number three. So this, this is something we have to remind the students. Look, these two movements are very easy to, these scenarios are, are like effortless to escape once you've gotten your reps in, okay? Because we don't allow the arm control and we're on our side. This is the escape. But if somehow our opponent managed to put us onto our back, and he has our arm, that's no longer called the headlock escape. You'll hear people call it a scarf escape or kesegatami escape, but there's some real issues there. You know, I can get submitted from that position. So when we're on our side, we're safe. I don't have a lot of pressure on me and I'm not really at risk of any submission. But again, if he gets control over my arm and he puts me flat onto my back, he can put a lot of pressure on me here, and he can start manipulating my arm, you know, he can start submitting me. So here's going to be our escape. Okay. So. This arm that he has control over, I want to put the blade of my wrist under his floating rib here. And then I'm going to secure it with the other hand. Okay, so now I have a lock on my arm, and I don't have to worry about him manipulating my arm for a submission. And I have a good pressure on his ribs. Kind of, he's squeeze, well, give me a squeeze. I'm also giving him a squeeze. I'm comfortable for him too. So this pressure here is, is going to also help me get manipulate his weight, okay? So keep the position. Grab actually my arm here, yes. So here's the thing. I, if there's a space between my hips and his hips, it's not gonna benefit me. So my initial movement is gonna be to get our hips close to one another. Once the hips are close, now I can load for a proper bridge. And I'm gonna bridge as if I want his head to hit the mat. So I'm gonna bridge straight up, yeah. Oh. Once his weight is up, I'll follow through to come to the top. And if he grabs my head now, again, same thing. I'm going to base out just like we did to escape. And then next week, we'll talk about how to take the arm lock in this scenario.